Kia ora, I'm Justine, the nerdy half of the Breakaway Bravehearts. And today I'm back in Aotearoa, New Zealand, exploring the stunning Whangarei district of New Zealand's North Island. In this video, I'm in search of a special spot. I'm looking for something that will fit the lens of social tourism. I want to find a spot that will help me learn more about the community I'm visiting, isn't too hard on the environment, is great for the locals, and of course is a whole lot of fun. I think I found something unique that meets the mark. I'll talk you through my experience at Rua Peka Peka Pa and review the site using the BB Stars, our social tourism criteria. Firstly, Whangarei City itself. It's a lively city, small by global standards, but big enough to provide a tourist with everything he might need. There are cafes, boutique shops, and plenty of galleries and museums, like the Clapham's Clock Museum and the Hundvasa Gallery. I have to say my favorite spot in Whangarei City is the waterfront, where you will find a fabulous sculpture walk. Here, nature and art come together in the coolest way possible. Wandering along, you can take in the beautiful scenery while appreciating the work and the love that's gone into these sculptures. Along the way, there are many information panels giving both Māori, Indigenous and European history of the area. My favourite piece was Wave and Waka by Ngāti Wai sculptor Te Warahia He Taraka and local Chris Booth. Enormous stone waves wrap around a 20 metre long waka tete, fishing canoe. It's both a comment on colonisation and an acknowledgement of the importance of Whangarei as both a landing place for Māori ancestral canoes and later as a point of arrival for Pākehā European colonists. If you'd like more info on the sculptures, there is a link in the description below. But while Whangarei City has plenty to offer in itself, Today we are venturing out across the district. Like Wave and Waka, our first stop, 40 minutes drive north of Whangarei, also reflects the tension in the relationship between the indigenous and the colonist. It is a site of huge historical significance to the country, but which receives surprisingly little attention. The Rua Peka Peka Pa is the site of one of the largest and most complex fortifications of its kind. The fortress was designed by the Ngāpui Iwi to challenge British rule and fight against breaches of the Treaty of Waitangi. Although the country's founding document was supposed to protect Māori while welcoming British settlers, the treaty almost immediately became a source of conflict as soon as it was signed, and within five years, the New Zealand wars had begun. Dua Pekka Pekka played a pivotal role in the conflict between Māori and British forces. As you can see, it is not a ticketed tourist attraction, but an open public space, cared for by local iwi and the Department of Conservation. The site offers some information in its signage, but has no interactive technology, exhibits or reconstructions to entertain you, simply the natural remains of what was once an intricate defensive structure, featuring trenches, tunnels and palisades. The pa was named Rua Peka Peka, or bats' nests, because of the dark underground dugouts with narrow circular entrances at the top, which gave access to shelters that could protect up to 20 warriors from cannon fire and there were passages between the front and bank trenches so that warriors could move forward to fire and return to shelter to reload. Walking through Rua Peka Peka Pa, you can't help but feel a sense of reverence for the events that happened here. The battle that took place was one of the final ones in years of conflict between Māori chiefs and British forces. And aside from its historical significance, Rua Peka Peka Pa offers stunning panoramic views of the surrounding countryside. And opposite the entrance to the pa is a walk through the forest where you'll get a feel for the terrain where warriors snuck and soldiers trampled. This serene landscape witnessed a clash of cultures 
that resulted in tragic loss of life. It's estimated that around 20 British soldiers lost their lives, while the casualties among the Māori defenders were higher, with approximately 100 warriors dying here. The significance of Rua Peka Peka Pā is obvious. So here we'll begin our social tourism review, starting with a look at the social good this site provides. Ngā pākanga o Aotearoa, or the Great New Zealand Wars, also sometimes called Te Riri Pākehā, or the White Man's Anger, are not well known across the globe, yet of huge importance to New Zealand culture. Their legacy stretches across time to today and underlies ongoing political and cultural tension within New Zealand society. So I was grateful to be able to walk around the site exactly as it is, open to all and left to nature. While the information on the wood signs is a little ragged, there is a QR code to help you gain more info to digest in your own time. The site considers both sides of the battle. You can walk or just drive a little further past the bush to see where the British forces were camped on the opposite hill. Here the story of these soldiers is also recorded and acknowledged. Throughout time there used to be various locals offering guided tours, but since COVID these have become a little difficult to find. This is one place where you'll need to be a little bit more proactive if you want to do more than what's on offer on the signage. But there is plenty of info available if you're willing to look online. For starters, I've popped a link in the description below to the website of the trustees of the area. It is definitely a little known area and you are likely to have the place to yourself. So I hope that if you do get to visit, you spread the word and give the site the attention it deserves. As far as I could tell, there were no volunteer activities that would work for tourists. Dua Pika Pika has suffered a checkered past, with ups and downs in its popularity and in its management. Now it's cared for by New Zealand's Department of Conservation, Te Rua Pika Pika Trust, contractors and volunteers. They recognise there is still a lot to be done and are working together to find new ways to protect and promote the site for future generations. This is all paid for by Crown funding, so we're grateful to the New Zealand taxpayers. The site is not really built for wheelchair users and visitors will need a good level of fitness and comfortable shoes. My govmoots were not a good choice. I didn't see any accommodations for hearing or sight impairments. Signs were offered in English and Te Reo Māori. Unisex toilets were offered on the British side of the grounds. Both sides seem to have been treated with equal respect and attention. Given the sombre background of the site, which the grey clouds helped enhance on the day we visited, I probably wouldn't use the word fun, although I did thoroughly enjoy our time there. I loved being able to walk through at my own pace, engage with the space naturally and just take in the surroundings in peace. I also really loved walking through the native bush, which brought back childhood memories of bushwalking with my family. Considering there was no entrance fee, I was grateful for the signage that was provided. After visiting large tourist attractions across Europe, at first I did feel something was lacking. I wanted a video explanation or a reconstruction on the site. But on reflection, I have completely changed my mind about this. The site is sacred and needs to be respected as such. Perhaps in the future there will be investment in some kind of supporting building with educational information or interactive activities. But for now, I think it's perfect the way it is. It's there for all with no gimmicks or gift shops, just the land and its spirit. Rua Pika Pika is not reachable via public transport. This is common in New Zealand, as our landscape, combined with our small population, has meant investment in public transport is a cost that governments haven't prioritised. At the entrance, the signs ask you to tread carefully 
so as not to damage the earthwork. Also, as the pa is a sacred site, food cannot be taken in. There are no rubbish or trash cans, as it's hoped you wouldn't need to bring anything that needs to be thrown away. As it is run by the Department of Conservation, the site is subject to numerous legal acts around sustainability and animal protection. They have a heritage and visitor strategy with the goal to sustainably manage visitors and protect and enhance the value of the culture and historic heritage. And I have to say, they've done a wonderful job. I truly enjoyed my time on the PA, particularly looking through the branches and leaves searching for tui. I spent a lot of time in the North Island, so there is still so much to share. And next up will be our video in the far north, highlighting the fabulous work local iwi have done to protect and share their natural heritage. So make sure you hit subscribe and click the notifications bell to join us there. Until then, feel free to leave a comment or ask me questions. I'd love to hear from you. Happy travels, everyone.